Is your praying mantis molting? Not sure what to do about it? Watch this video, some tips on how to deal with it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm David and today we're talking about praying mantis molting. Now this advice is going to pretty much apply to most species of praying mantis, although I, as usual I highly recommend checking out your species specific needs because it's really helpful. We're going to be talking about molting and just like with jumping spiders and other species it is a scary time for an owner because your praying mantis is going to be at the most vulnerable and things can go wrong. So I want to talk about some of the things you can do to help your praying mantis, some of the things to expect and also some of our own experiences with praying mantis molting. So firstly let's talk about praying mantis molting in general. Your praying mantis, if you get it at a sub-adult or juvenile level, is probably going to molt several times in its lifetime and every single time you're probably going to be worried about it and a bit scared. It's okay to be scared, it's okay to be worried but generally they're going to be okay because they've had millions of years of evolution to perfect the, to perfect the technique, especially if the environment's right. Generally, your prey mantis is going to molt by hanging from a ceiling or a branch and they're going to do it upside down. It's the way they kind of squeeze themselves out of their original exoskeleton. And I find it a bit interesting how they do it and it's a bit odd looking, but it's the way they do it and it's the way that seems to work for them. Now your prey mantis, when it molts, is probably going to show some slightly odd behavior. They may be off their food immediately before. They may stay in one location for longer they may behave slightly different to what you are used to, and that's completely fine. And those are all good telltale signs that your praying mantis is going to molt. So maybe you could um, take the food out, give them a bit of time, see if they get on with it, and then maybe offer food again later. It's also really important that just after your praying mantis has molted, that you do not offer food for at least a day, just to give them some time to harden up and to just get used to their new skin, I suppose, their new shell. Now, how can you help and support your praying mantis when they're molting? Now, it's really important, as I said, not to feed them just after a molt, and if they are not taking food, just to give them a bit of time to see if they are going to molt. It's also really important that you keep that humidity level in that praying mantis enclosure nice and high. The higher the humidity, the better generally during molting. It's easier for them to just slip out of their exoskeleton. Make sure you do have branches they can hang from. Make sure you do preferably have organza or some sort of fabric at the top of their enclosure so they can hang from that. And then generally you'll find that they have a much easier molting experience. Heat is another important factor as well. If you can maintain the heat in their enclosure, that is also going to give them a much better chance of molting successfully. Another thing people generally recommend when a praying mantis is molting, or just preferably just before, because you don't want to do it while they're doing it, is maybe give them a spritz on or nearby. I am not sure about this advice. If you can do it before, fine, but while they're doing it, I would strongly recommend against doing it because you could disrupt it or scare them and then they can have a mismolt, which isn't something you really want to see. Now, as a rule, your praying mantis will molt quite quickly, unlike a jumpy spider, which takes quite a little while for them to actually molt. A praying mantis will just get on with it. Both our praying mantises and some praying mantises of people we've spoken to and our friends, when they decide to do it, they get on with it, and the whole process will be done within a few hours. Um, it can sometimes catch you off guard, where suddenly they're just acting normally with some of them, or they're just sitting there, and next thing you know, they're squeezing out of their excess skeleton and they're getting on with it. Really don't disturb them during this time, don't move their enclosures, let them do what they have to do, and then once you are certain they're out of it, then you can do what you need to do, like moving it or offering a bit of water, whatever. It's just really important you don't disturb them while they're doing it, because they will get on with it, it will be quite quick generally, and you're pretty lucky if you can even get some footage of it because it's a very interesting experience. Again, after molting, you maintain the humidity a little bit, you know, make sure there's plenty of heat in there and don't offer food for at least a day. Once your praying mantis has molted, it may be worth keeping their exoskeleton as a souvenir. It's quite interesting. They will do it multiple times. It's quite interesting to see their exoskeletons and how big they get once they squeeze out. I don't know how they fit all of that in there and then suddenly they're out and they're okay. I do hope you found the advice in this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, happy to hear from me down below. But in the meantime, take care and have a really awesome day.